Okay, welcome everyone. Why don't we just talk about bone masses around the shoulder today. I kind of start with benign, but I'm going to kind of mix it up uh, in this particular talk. And again, it'll be more of a show and tell rather than a lecture type format today. So, uh, Eric, why don't you go ahead and take this one? Okay, uh, multiple MR images of uh, the humerus showing a, uh, a uh, deformity of the distal shaft or, and uh, metastasis and epistasis of the humerus. Um, and then also an expansile mass was primarily high. Signal characteristics on fast breast images in the proximal humerus. Looks like a skeletally immature patient. So th this was actually a fracture through a unicameral bone cyst uh, with hemorrhage into the, uh, the fracture, and that's why it's bright on the T1-weighted image. So like the wavy appearance of the distal shaft, that's artifact, or...? Uh, no, there was deformity, but I think some of it might be artifact from the scanner. But, but the, no, there was, there was a congenital deformity. Yeah. But the, uh, the main thing I pointed this for is just to look at the uh, cyst. This was a unicameral bone cyst with hemorrhage in it. Okay, uh, Brian? All right, there's a... Uh It's a cute uh, onset bone pain. Pathologic <laughs> fracture. It's not enhancing um, intermediate signal. Uh, be curious to see if this was uh, bright on T2 or did you patch that? Yeah, it was bright on uh, T2. Yeah, so we'll see if it's just. Okay. So another unicameral bone cyst with a fracture. That's a little bit more obvious fracture, and this is a, an older individual. Okay, Pratima. 18 year old female with left upper arm pain. Uh, so there is a septated lesion, um, lytic lesion with a fracture through it involving the proximal humerus, uh, which has uptake on the bone scan. Um, so in an 18 year old, um, here, here the cortex kind of looks uh, intact, although it's eroded. Um, so 18 year old, I would think of a, oh, well, there's a the fracture. Um, Expansile lesion, uh, aneurysmal bone cyst um, would be the simple bone cyst, right? I have to remember, aneurysmal bone cyst is not aneurysmal, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it certainly is uh, aneurysmal, yeah. right. but it turned out to be a uh, simple, simple bone cyst with a fracture in this case. So abrupt elbow pain for one day, no trauma history. Abrupt elbow pain. So there's kind of a just almost complete a, a replacement of the marrow and the metaphysis and the and, and the shaft, and it, I think that's fluid. Um, although you need to confirm with other sequences. Um, so this could be one large unicameral bone cyst, or some fluid, some fluid level, or a non aneurysmal aneurysmal bone cyst. <laughs> Nice fluid line there. So that, that was kind of the mother of all aneurysmal bone cysts. Yeah. Except it's not aneurysmal. <laughs> it that's kind of not bone. fair because yeah. you have aneurysmal bone cyst that's not even in the bone. Yeah. And you have aneurysmal bone cyst that's not aneurysmal. So we had an aneurysmal non bone cyst, and now we have a non aneurysmal aneurysmal bone cyst. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might as well keep everything straightforward. Okay. Eric. Uh, 45 year old male, several months after fracture, no shoulder droop. Um, in a coronal sagittal reconstruction CT. Uh, you wonder about something is going on with the scapula or in that general area up here. That one looks a little more anterior in the soft tissue mass. A scapula? Um, well, I'm not seeing much scapula. I, mean, I see it there, but yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not seeing a lot of bone. Um, and then again, uh, the axial image is showing possibly some bony destruction of the scapula uh, body. Um, multiple images. And it looks there's some, just not as much bone there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, this was Gorham's disease of the scapula and the clavicle. 
Uh, so what's Gorham's disease? I can't tell you too much about that. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I think uh, we've had some other, I, I think we but you know, it's, it's basically a, a lytic, it's a benign vascular lesion of bone that it can involve multiple bones uh, leading to, off, in often cases, kind of rapid lysis of the bone. It, it can be self-limited and the bone can grow back. It can be a little bit variable in, its, in the way it, uh, it happens. But it's, a, it's really a benign vascular lesion. Okay, Brian? It's all over the place. So th th that was another uh, kind of diffuse osteolysis. So it kind of puts you in the area of osteolysis syndromes. Uh, these two are both Gorham's disease. Uh, then there are some others that are kind of in the differential, which are even less common than Gorham's disease often. So, so there are a number of different lesions that you can think about, but uh, a lot of these are going to be in kids and are going to be congenital type lesions. There wasn't that much osteolysis on the x-ray, right? It looked more like a mixed lytic and lytic lesion. Yeah, it was mostly lytic lesions. There may be a little bit of bony reaction around it to where, where uh, you get adjacent trabecula that, that uh, hypertrophy, uh, but it's really kind of a diffuse, mostly lytic lesion, multiple lytic areas. And in this case, are more cystic-like uh, on the MR examination. That was Gorham's disease. So, so these are kind of the major ones. Uh, Gorham's disease is the of these is the only one that I've seen uh, with any frequency. So it's replacement of the normal bone by uh, by non-neoplastic vascular tissue, uh, probably in the area of a, kind of an aggressive hemangioma tend to be young adults. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, 40 year old male with uh, right clavicular uptake on TEC 99 scan for hyperparathyroidism. Okay. So right clavicle uh, looks like it's expanded, uh, yeah, and deformed. Uh, uh, so this could yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't have a real differential for this, but this could be old fracture deformity, or it could be a mass. Um, so there is, uh, it's replaced uh, by a mass with surrounding soft tissue fluid uh, uh, for the clavicle in a 40-year-old. Could be metastatic. Um, don't really have a good differential there, but. Uh, That's how dark it is. Yeah. And usually most, most dark on T2. Are a little so lymphoma, fibroid tumor, fibrous tumors, uh, dark brown tumor, yeah. So the patient had hyperparathyroidism. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Tumor, right. Hyperparathyroidism. And yeah. the fibrosis in it that reaches below sigma intensity. Mm -hmm. In this case, they're not always low like this. Right. But uh, in this case, it was. All right, chest x ray. Showing uh, there's a lot there's severe osteopenia the right humeral head, and uh, uh, the, the right scapula is kind of poorly demarcated. So I get cross sectional imaging to look for these things better. So there's a mass within the metaphysial region, the proximal humerus, and it looks like there's it's broken through the cortex. Soft tissues on ultrasound, brown tumor. So another brown tumor. Okay, Eric. Sixty-three-year-old female.
quite sure what bang in three months. Uh, there's a lucency. Looks like it's in a scapular neck um, with sclerotic margins. Probably an indolent or slow growing type of uh, process. And on the uh, MR, it's some generally low high T2, low T1 high T2 signals, heterogeneity. Um, and pretty similar period. I'm not sure, maybe one of these is post GAD. Um, mm -hmm. It was not a cyst. Uh, it's definitely got some solid component, but it's well marginated. There's not a large soft tissue component. This could also be, since we're in the, certainly could be something like a brown tumor, but other things, um, uh, oh. there's bone Hold destruction. It. Let me find the results. <laughs> How did that get there? Oh, I... Shoot, these are all out of order now. Okay, well, anyway, the, this is an inflammatory pseudomass from chronic inflammation. And it was a uh, chronic, uh, and uh, this is just a chronic inflammatory pseudomass. Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, curated and, and did fine. I've got to find the results question. Okay, Brian. All right. Uh, shoulder pain for two weeks. Had capillary carcinoma thyroids, and then high left shoulder uptake. Um, still see some thyroid tissue on the uh, CT. Yeah, so this turned out to be unrelated to the thyroid disease. It was a benign fibrous histiocytoma. Uh, very uncommon lesion within the bones, but in the fibrohistiocyte category. And it's just locally curated, locally resected. Uh, it rarely can come back if you don't completely resect it, but it can be of narrow margins resection. And that basically states that the diagnosis should be considered in any child or teenager who presents with a non-ossifying fibroma, as these can look like non-ossifying fibromas, uh, but who have pain. The non-ossifying fibromas tend to be asymptomatic, and these can be associated with pain. This is just another example from the literature of, uh, of the same lesion. Okay. A uh, 37 year old with left shoulder pain for three to four years. Um, so there is a um, mixed lytic and sclerotic region involving the scapula um, in the region of the glenoid. Uh, uh, that is um, low on T1, pretty high on T2, and demonstrates peripheral enhancement in a central load signal oh, okay. lesion. Yeah. That's not much enhancement. Right. So it's something benign, long standing process. Um, Intraoceous ganglion fluids, yeah. Shoulder pain for months, rule out rotator cuff tear. So I think there's a, let's see, in the inferior glenoid, there's some foci of increased signal intensity and kind of like the anterior okay. superior, yeah, is that maybe that's a paralabial cyst or a secundal cyst or something. An anterior superior? In the anterior superior, there's a there's kind of hypo intense mass, yeah. Let's look at that. Okay. Uh, rule out tear. So it's kind of round, well demarcated mass in the anterior glenoid. Okay, and what else do you see here? Uh, let's see, that's our subscap. So well, actually, this is part of the bone. There's a lot of hyperostosis within the bone. Oh, that's hyperostosis. Oh, so this is like an osteoid osteoma, the scapula? That is the hyperostosis. 
and there's no stewardess to help. Here the plane film showing the hyperostosis on the plane film, and that's probably the nidus in here. Here's a CT scan, also showing the hyperostosis and the nidus. The nidus is typically brighter than our nidus, I guess. It is bright. It 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 just depends upon the age. When these get older, they they actually. The natural history of these is eventually go away. They infold and they f they become fibrotic, so it it depends upon the age as to how bright it is on MR. But typically yes, and typically you have a little calcified nidus centrally on the CT. But that's that's pretty variable. And there's a another MR later. Okay, uh, Eric. 22 year old male, right shoulder pain, 10 months, no trauma history. And this one has a uh, round uh, mass in the scapular notch, uh, maybe possibly some bony destruction. Looks actually quite a bit like the one we just saw. Uh, some sclerosis and some lytic area. Again, it's an osteodosis. Yeah, and as you know, they can be they can be located in three different locations, in which case they have kind of different imaging appearance. Cortical, you can get a lot of sclerosis with those, and majorly. And then, if it's near a joint, you can often get joint effusions, and it's pretty common, especially if they're cortical, also to have edema in the surrounding soft tissues. Okay, Brian. I think that's the, the there's probably one other thing that should be included in in that because it's treated differently than one, ones you've described, and then that's uh, oh, yeah. yeah. These in these kids with uh, what look like inflammatory lesions, if they don't have a typical course of that looks like infection, obviously you'd have to do blood cultures and work this up for an infection. Uh, but uh, always think of uh, of uh, of histiocytosis uh, in these individuals, we've already seen a lot from the, uh, Dr. Sue, who who has a lot of the a lot of those cases. But that's one in the sh in the shoulder. Uh, let's see, who's next? I'm not sure. Uh, 27 year old with left mandibular pain. Um, so there is a big mass replacing the left uh, side of the mandible. Um, Mixed lytic and sclerotic in a 27 year old. Uh, okay. Um, several months later, in the same patient, I believe, uh, there's right upper arm pain. Okay, so there's another lesion in the proximal humerus. Uh, so, two lesions uh, that are. Uh, uh, so, this could be again EG considering uh, multiple lesions uh, in the skeletal system. So this is the MR of the shoulder lesion, which is heterogeneous. Um, really involved in the cortex, which is pretty uncommon for a lot of things. Certainly infection has to be in this, but because this looks like it's more chronic, uh -huh. uh, and here you can see it's going down yeah, through the bone. It looks a lot like infection. Six uh, months six later, months it's later. bigger. Yeah, it's going outside. It's, it's yeah. very typical of this sort of thing. A little, little older than the yeah. typical patients. Okay, so there's a large expansile mass in the proximal humerus, a soft tissue component, an increased uptake on PET imaging. Let's see. Um, yeah, the humeral head lost its normal morphology. There's a lot of surrounding expansile. Yeah, well, it looks like a mass is extended through the bone out into yeah. soft tissues, right? 
Uh, so, and, and you know, and it goes to the metaphysis. It's, I mean, it goes to the physical scar or plate, uh, epiphyseal plate. Um, so this, could this also be EG? There's kind of. Okay. Oh, uh, that wouldn't have been my first choice in this one, but no. <laughs> that's what it turned out to be. This, I would be, I would have been more concerned about a neoplastic mass in this one myself. Uh, though it looked like there could be a fluid level there, so I would have. My first thought would have been a t more of a osteosarc, but it turned out to be a, a EG. And this is later after treatment. Okay, Eric? Seven year old male, slow growing mass, uh, several months, right shoulder pain, several years, gastric, gastric cancer. Um, so the humeral head uh, is somewhat full. Defined. There's some irregular sclerosis. I have a feeling there may be a destructive process um, with some sclerosis in that area. Um, let's see, this is a bone scan showing obviously a very bright uh, lot of activity. A bone scan in the shoulder. 2006, 2004. So it's been, been there for a while. A couple of years. Uh, I guess that's it. That's probably the injection site. Yeah. And then on the uh, MR images, uh, there's a, it's like a marked uh, deformity and destructive process and also some, in the proximal humerus and also some adjacent fluid collections and some thick rimmed enhancement. So this could, this appears to involve bone and soft tissue and possibly the joint. Um, and certainly, you think about chronic infection and uh, abscess. And okay. Yeah. So this actually wasn't infected. It's just chronic, poorly treated, uh, long-term degenerative disease with uh, destructive arthropathy and uh, and the development of hydroxyapatite deposition disease, probably from the chronic bone injury. Brian. So there's a uh, fairly well circumscribed hyperintense blood-related lesion in the humeral head. Uh, looks like it's crossing the what would have been the physeal scar. Uh, it almost has a chondroid appearance. There is some ring and arc. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's in, in chondroma, not quite as common as in the distal femur, but but not really rare in the shoulder. And generally, if it has these characteristics like we're seeing here, the scalloped appearance, the kind of typical internal uh, characteristics of kind of ring-like uh, uh, things, and it's just this very typical chondroid appearance, uh, then it's uh, virtually always benign and can be, uh, uh, you don't need to be aggressive about working these up. And th there's just another example of the same thing. This is a little bit more typical where you can actually see the areas of the calcification. You can see fat extending into the lesion from the periphery, the very scallop margins. These are all very characteristic of appearance of a benign enchondroma. Uh, very, in the periphery, these almost never become uh, degenerate into malignancy, though in the literature there, there are always examples of that happening. That tends to occur more centrally with uh, uh, mo multiple enchondroma, and more like Olier's disease, and central lesions are much more at risk than the peripheral lesions. Typically, if it becomes malignant, uh, you'll you will change the morphology and you'll change the internal structure so that you'll have more of a mass which is destroying things, and then you tend to get more symptoms and and a larger lesion. This is very characteristic of a benign enchondroma. Okay, uh, Brian? Oh, it's your turn. 70-year-old uh, with three months of increasing shoulder pain. Uh, so there is, again, uh, a, a heterogeneous mass involving the proximal humerus um, with low signal within it and fat infiltrating it uh, through the periphery. Uh, looks like an enchondroma, but she's been having pain. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a Pain, she has yes, she has tears, so. right? Uh -huh. right. <laughs> yeah. So, 45-year-old acute subscapular tear and 
incidental bone lesion. So it's a cortically based mass, kind of on the posterior aspect of the humerus um, with sclerosis and kind of irregular cortical margins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, just kind of, you know, I'd be wondering about like a surface of a parosteal. Uh, let's see. So there's sclerosis inside. The margins are fairly smooth. We don't really see a malignant type yeah. periosteal yeah. reaction. So it looks more like a benign process, but it looks like it's involving the periosteum or the cortex, right? Yeah. Chondroma. Okay. This is a periosteal chondroma. Uh, I think there's subtle differences between the two, but they're both benign cartilage lesions that tend to be on the periphery of the bone. Eric? Uh, yeah, five year old uh, palpable mass right upper arm, and there's a process involving the lateral cortex of the right humeral metaphysis with uh, looks like some bony destruction and uh, some interruption of the cortex. And on the, um, the uh, cross-sectional imaging, there is some maybe some mild rim enhancement. And it does have a generally well-defined margin. There's some cortical buttressing and expansion at the edges. But I uh, also would think about some type of juxtacortical or periosteal chondroma. And on the bone scan, assuming we covered that, area, uh, there's nothing uh, asymmetric or abnormal in the bone scan, ultrasound showing also mass. Um, yeah. Okay, there's a 20-year-old male with a large uh, expansile uh, mass off the undersurface of the scapula. There is some ring and arc uh, components. I think it's more than just the undersurface. Yeah. Um, that's pretty large. Uh, yeah. I don't know if five centimeter rule applies here, but worry about possibly the limit. Yeah. Though, though the margins look pretty sharply defined. Uh, right. And it looks like there's a lot of kind of bone involved here. Typically large. M malignant bone lesions kind of blow everything out, or big spherical lesions that have a lot of soft tissue mass associated with them. Uh, but uh, this was a chondrosarcoma. And, and it has more of the chondroid structure, but again, the size and the kind of ill-defined peripheral areas. And there are much more areas here where it really looks like there's soft tissue. Uh, and th this is more, as you were alluding to, uh, or more suggestive of a malignant lesion, which this was. Thirty-nine-year-old okay. with right shoulder, painful, limited motion for ten years, no trauma history. Uh, so there is a cortical irregularity involving the medial aspect of the humeral head um, with some periosteal reaction and a big mass uh, replacing the proximal humerus. Uh, uh, and extending into the soft tissues. Um, so this could be, uh, this was a 39-year-old, I believe. So it could be an osteosarcoma. Uh, looks malignant to me. I'd be concerned. Uh, osteosarcoma. Really good place for osteosarcoma. Right. Yes. Could be, uh, there's some chondroid appearance to it. Could be a chondrosarcoma, yeah. Seven-year-old female with palpable mass. Uh, so on the left shoulder, uh, yeah. Hmm. So there's an expansile mass arising from the metadiaphysis. It, it almost looks like a like a uh, osteochondroma, <laughs> a villus. Okay, and with a cartilage cap. Yeah, so I, I think there's an osteochondroma. So the cortex is intact. The, med, the marrow space, it looks like it has basically normal elements, but they're extending into the lesion. 
And this is a more of a sessile type osteochondral. Sessile, yeah. Not pedunculated. Fifty-three-year-old male left scapular mass, uh, mass with pain, four months, and uh, this is a somewhat similar-looking uh, exophytic lesion with uh, some calcifications and um, a bit of heterogeneity and some peripheral enhancements. So this, uh, okay, converse sarcoma. So uh, let me see if we can. Yeah, here the. The calcification, the matrix, looks much more bizarre. And, and typically, when you get these, the osteochondromas that extend out like this, that are a little bit more pedunculated, you get more of a cauliflower type appearance, like we saw in other lesions elsewhere. This really doesn't look like it has this, the uh, underlying architecture of either normal bone or that cauliflower appearance, which is typical of osteochondroma. So this really would make you worry a little bit more that it's a little bit bizarre. But, but uh, benign osteochondromas can also have very, very bizarre appearing uh, uh, calcifications. So I would, I would be concerned about this lesion. Also, it looks like there may be a lot of soft tissue. So you just have to, on the plain film, so you just have to check with the MR and see what that soft tissue is made of. And here, there is a pretty thick soft tissue component of this. So uh, I think this is one that you'd certainly have to be concerned about. Okay. Um, so there is. Is that Brian? I'm not sure. I lose track. Is it is it you, Brian, or is it me? <laughs> Go ahead. Again, it, it looks a lot like a chondroid-type lesion that we've seen, and the size and expensile nature of it would, would make you concerned. I agree. Okay. 23-year-old uh, with shoulder pain. So there's a cortical lesion um, involving the posterior aspect of the humeral head with a central uh, uh, dark, kind of a peripheral dot. Um, not that much hyperostosis. Um, um, yeah. On this one, it looks much more aggressive uh, with a lot of surrounding fluid and marrow edema. Uh, so lesion looked just like this last week, didn't it? Probably. Uh, Eric, didn't you and Charles have a lesion that looked like this last week? Um, I don't really remember one like this. Oh, I, I think Charles showed, showed me one that we were discussing. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. I was okay. off one day, maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. So, cortical lesion like this, low, right? Uh, yeah, a lot of soft tissue stuff. Uh, peripheral. Yeah. I mean, I want to say chondroblastoma. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we thought the other lesion was that Charles had. Remember, had that little yeah. dense yeah, nodule around it. So that, that's what we thought. Yeah. And this was chondroblastoma. Th this is. You hope to pick these up much earlier than this. This lesion is for a chondroblastoma has been there for a long time, and typically you don't get the big soft tissue components unless it's uh, been there for a long time. Fifteen-year-old male with pain uh, for two days after trauma. It's kind of a poorly defined, loosened lesion in the epiphysis of the humerus, humeral head. Wow. Looks pretty well defined to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so persistent pain for a year. It looks like, I mean, it's, it's heterogeneous. There's, it's complex. There's soft tissue component, cortical breakthrough. So this is malignant until uh, proven otherwise. A lot of. What part of the bone is it involved? Oh, sorry, it's in the epiphysis, so like chondrosarc <laughs> or uh, 
Uh, Condor Blast. Condor, sorry. Condor yeah. Blast. Yeah, and this is even an older one. Yeah. And again, you've got soft tissue lesion part of this one as well. Okay. 40 year old female shoulder pain. And there's a uh, area of actually some increased T1 and increased T2 signal. Uh, I think that's adjacent to or possibly involved in the scapula. It's, uh, yeah, it's expanding, I think, some of the scapular spine or posterior scapula. Um, some heterogeneity. And um, primarily increased signal. There's no cortical breakthrough or fracture. Um, I don't see any edema or periosteal reaction, so I'd favor something benign, I guess. Brian? Oops, is Brian no longer with us? Oh, looks like we lost Brian. Okay, uh, right proximal humeral mass in a 68 year old. Uh, so there is cortical, <coughs> bless you. Uh, there's <coughs> cortical discontinuity involving the proximal humerus uh, with a periosteal reaction and a mass replacing, uh, mass replacing it. Uh, so in a 68-year-old, I'd be highly suspicious. Uh, could be. Oh, these are surgical clips, right? Right. So this could be a recurrent lesion. A lot of uptake on the bone scan. Uh, a big soft tissue mass, I mean, a uh, yeah, big mass with soft tissue extension, cortical breakthrough. Uh, uh, so it could, uh, could be metastatic or a primary bone tumor such as uh, osteosarcoma or chondrosarcoma. Uh, radiologic, so they said, yeah, by an excision with hemiarthroplasty. Intraosseous malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. Okay. Yeah, I see those every day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't think you see very many malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors, period, <laughs> much less one inside the bone. So, so uh, 71 year old male, pain. So it's kind of a permeative mass in the central shaft of the humerus with the pathologic fracture. Um, yeah, the cortex is kind of eroded. Uh, yeah, the cortical margins are thin. There's a lot of soft tissue edema. I guess this has, that's the site of the path fracture. Um, so it's a skeletally uh, mature patient. Um, given the permeative appearance, I, I, I'd go with MET. Probably, that would be, probably be the most common. Um, yeah, now, you can see that the lesion is really, it's very elongated. Yeah. So if it's really an aggressive malignant lesion, it should burst out spherically. So it's 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 doesn't look good. I think it looks malignant, but it's not as aggressive as some. It turned out to be multiple myeloma. Okay. Plasmacytoma. This is just the spine. Showing the abnormal marrow. Okay. Eric? All right, this is uh, multiple MRI images of his shoulder showing a, a um, irregular shaped, uh, smoothly marginated mass with intermediate T1 and high T2 characteristics. So he appears, does not seem to uh, communicate on the arthrogram, if that is an arthrogram. Um, it's in the soft tissues. Uh, it's sort of non specific. Um, if this enhances much after GAD. I don't think I have a GAD lesion here. So so this is, the, this is when we see it at this time, and but the margins were fairly sharply defined. So uh, this was thought to be a benign lesion at the time. Oops, I'm sorry. Shoot. What, what happened then is that the patient came back, the lesion shade stayed the same overall shape but more than doubled in thickness. But I think because the shape looked the same, 
the, the radiologist didn't really notice that there was a difference, even though if you did any measurements on the width, it was significantly increased. Uh, so it wasn't really appreciated as a malignant lesion. And then they asked for a, a second opinion, and this turned out to be a malignant sarcoma. Uh, Brian's having trouble, he says, on, uh, with his uh, internet connection. Okay, uh, so plain x ray and uh, MR images demonstrate a, uh, a destructive bony lesion involving the glenoid with a lot of soft tissue component. Uh, yeah, uh, so again, uh, could be anything, right? Sarcoma. And I forgot to, I, I don't think I ever found out the tissue type, but we just found out there was a malignant sarcoma. So kind of a heterogeneous appearance to the marrow signal in the region of the lesser tuberosity. Um, I, 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 in this region, I guess I'd, I'd still go for like a METS lymphoma. Eric? Eric, are you still with us? Uh, yeah, sorry. 20 year old male right shoulder pain. Yes. 20 year old male right shoulder pain for two months. Um, uh, there's some sort of heterogeneous uh, speculation. Yeah, maybe some uh, moth eaten or mild permeative destruction in the proximal right humerus. And then on the MR, you can see a large soft tissue mass in that area um, with some adenopathy. So things you think about, you could think about there's multiple areas of uh, well, adenopathy, maybe also soft tissue mass. In the, in the muscles think about lymphoma or a malignancy such as a sarcoma. Uh, and if this is the same patient, then it's uh, marked progressed. Yep. Okay, 68 year old female uh, with a chest x ray. There is a lytic lesion in the right humeral head. Uh, I think even on the left side, it looks like there's some lucency in the humeral head. I'd like to uh, see what we get on the cross sectional images. Uh, before I completely lose Brian, I just wanted to remind everybody that Friday's session, I'd like to have an interesting case session. So if, uh, uh, Eric, if you could get a couple of interesting cases together uh, and then maybe send me the uh, PowerPoints, we could present those on, uh, on Friday. Okay. 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 So, okay, so right go ahead. Uh, yeah. So right here, right there's a lytic lesion. And possibly on the left side too. Uh, uh, I guess not. Looks like there is a uh, in the clavicle, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so big uh, soft tissue swelling and a cortical uh, destructive lesion involving the medial end of the right clavicle. Uh, uh, confirmed on the MR images. Uh, looks pretty infiltrative. Um, uh, it looks malignant. Uh, the vessels are spared. It demonstrates uptake on the PET scan. Uh, yeah, primary lymphoma. Yeah, so we have a destructive lesion in the inferior tip of the scapula. Just the tip? Oh, yeah. inferior tip and body, yeah. Uh, let's see. Looks like there's some lung nodules, too. So there's got to be Mets. Oh, that's massive. Mm, I mean, there's some increased T1 signal internally. It has this kind of a feathery Straight. appearance. Yeah, it's kind of a big mass sticking out with this kind of feathery appearance. Is like a liposarcoma or something? I don't know. Yeah. And that's 
you know, the striations come out. Sometimes you can see that as a periosteal reaction. Oh, okay. That's, that's elsewhere. That was a Ewing cycle. Oh. Uh, another shoulder proximal uh, metaphysis and proximal shaft. There's an irregular process, regular mass uh, infiltrating the bone marrow. Uh, I don't see an associated fracture. Um, other units. Sorry about that. <laughs> I uh, thought we had to have some other images besides this. Here you can just see kind of an onion skin almost type periosteal reaction. Uh, and this would be earlier on. Later on, it will tend to get more of the hair on end type reaction that probably was present in that last case if we'd had a plane fell. Okay, 10-year-old, uh, so there's a lot of osteoid formation in the proximal humerus, uh, not much of a periosteal reaction, involves the metadiaphysis in a 10-year-old. Um, osteosarcoma would be a primary consideration. Other things, uh, Ewing's can do that. Uh, lymphoma also. Um, low on T1 and a lot of periosteal reaction. Uh, Soft tissue mass, right? I think my differential is the same in that order, I think. Yeah. The shoulder pain. Um, so there's diffuse sclerosis of the humeral head with kind of soft tissue calcifications adjacent to it. And there are numerous foci with increased uptake on the bone scan. And uh, so there's aggressive, like, kind of periosteal reaction in a shaft with uh, adenopathy, enhancing adenopathy. Um, and big mass. Yeah, there's some like rib lesions too, yeah. Uh, uh, lung, 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 lung nodules. So, yeah, this has got to be a sarc home or something. Osteosarc, yeah. Forty-four-year-old female with shoulder pain for several months. Uh, there is a uh, predominantly lytic and sclerotic lesion with periosteal reaction involving the proximal humerus. Uh, uh, same thing, uh, although a little older for osteosarcoma. Demonstrates a lot of uptake. Um, say a little, little old for kind of in between, in, not right. old enough and not young enough. Okay. Now. Yeah. Uh, so on the MR, uh, so the heterogeneous mass is replacing it, right, with a lot of high signal foci within it. That's not that big. Uh, it's pretty small. I do see the periosteal reaction. Uh, hmm, yeah. Osteosarcoma, osteoblastic type. Okay. 11-year-old with shoulder pain, so there are kind of sclerotic foci within the uh, marrow space of the metadiaphysis and the diaphysis. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on the x-ray. <laughs> so this is an aggressive periosteal reaction, so aggressive that it hasn't That's had a chance to ossify yet. Yeah. 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 Okay, osteosarc. Obviously, pathologic fractures. And here's another osteosarc wow. with a pestia with a pathologic fracture. And here's a fracture. Wasn't initially recognized on this that there's a moth eaten appearance to the bone around it. So the patient came back uh, a month later just for follow up for a fracture. And, and then it was clearly recognized that it was a pathologic fracture with a big mass wow. there. And there's the mass. Okay, uh, Eric. Okay, another uh, shoulder MR T1 showing some uh, bone marrow placement in patchy areas in the in the humeral head. Also the glenoid, also the uh, the, the uh, chromium. So it's multiple areas. Um, wonder about something like uh, well metastatic disease, um, uh, myeloma. That it's in multiple sites, prostate. 
Yeah, phenolic prostate. Notice that's not really bright on the PD fat set like most lesions are, and it's low in signal on the T2, so that these were more uh, uh, sclerotic mets. So these are T1 and T2 are PD fat surveyed images. Uh, there's uh, extensive replacement of the marrow fat. Uh, okay. Uh, it's very homogeneous. Yeah, it's very heterogeneous, and but clavicle is involved as well, and I think the scapula too on the first. Um, yeah. So this is a generalized process. I would consider uh, marrow replacement diseases such as um, lymphoma, leukemia, or uh, severe anemia. Aplastic anemia. It's very heterogeneous. Maybe that's, yeah, so thalassemia. Uh, left shoulder mass, known myelofibrosis. So there's, there's an old clavicle fracture, I guess, is displaced. <laughs> and there's a soft tissue mass at the AC joint, kind of. And then there's uh, increased sclerosis of all the bones. Yeah, so the, the, there's heterogeneous marrow signal, but that's probably attributed to the myelofibrosis and uh, in and out of phase, 20% drop. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this. Well, if there's a drop, then it probably means that you have there's both fat, fat and water in, in the boxes. Okay. I mean, is it the diffusion? It's not. It looks. All, it looks like a geyser sign, really. Okay. And this was extramedullary hematopoiesis. Okay. Um, uh, all right. All right. Okay. So why don't we'll stop here, and then tomorrow we will do soft tissue masses of the wrist and hand. And then the next day, try to do the bones. And then on Friday, we'll have uh, an, an interesting case conference. Okay? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.